We'll see how it says a equals one half b times h. Here what we want to do is we want to solve for b. That's what they're asking of us. Now you recognize this formula as the formula for the area of a triangle, but what we're doing is we're just rearranging it to get b by itself. So how do we get b by itself? That's a good question, right? Well, what you want to do is you want to think about working from the outside in towards that particular variable by doing the opposite operation. So I'll show you what I mean. See how we're multiplying by one half? What you can do is you can divide by one half, okay, that's the opposite, to get rid of this one half, or what you can do is you can multiply by the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and multiply by two over one. If we do that to the right side, we wanna do that to the left side. So right now we're at two A equals one times BH. One times anything is itself. Now we just wanna get the B by itself. You can see it's multiplied by H. We wanna do the inverse operation, the opposite, divide both sides by H. You can see those cancel, and so our final answer is B equals 2A over H, and you can see we solve for B, meaning we got B by itself. B equals something, right? Okay, let's go to example number two. See if you can do this one. We've got V equals 4 thirds pi R cubed. Solve for R. So you might recognize this formula. It's the formula for the volume of a sphere, right? So how do you get the R by itself? We're gonna use that same technique of working from the outside in towards our desired variable here, right? How do we get rid of the 4 thirds? You could divide by 4 thirds, or you could do the opposite, multiply by the reciprocal, right? So we could just go ahead and multiply both sides by 3 fourths. So we got 3V, 3V over 4 equals, these are canceling, we get pi r cubed. Now what we wanna do, you can see we're multiplying by pi, we're gonna actually wanna divide by pi, or you can think about it as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply by one over pi, that way these cancel, so now we have r cubed equals three v over four pi. Now just remember when you're dividing by pi, that pi is gonna go in the denominator because it's like multiplying by one over pi. Sometimes students mistakenly They'll start creating like a complex fraction. They'll divide the whole thing by, uh, by pi right here. Okay, so by pi. But really when you're dividing by pi, see that's like here multiplying by the reciprocal. So this becomes like one over pi. The pi ends up in the denominator. So you don't wanna make it overly complicated like that. Just multiply by the reciprocal or think if you're dividing, you're putting that in the denominator. Okay, and then the last step, you can see we're uh, cubing r. We wanna do the inverse of that is to take the cube root of both sides. Okay, so the cube and the cube root, those are inverses. So we get r equals the cube root of the quantity 3v over four pi, right? And you got it. So that's the goal, so solve for r. Just think about working from the outside in. Okay, example number three, try this one. This one we have a equals one half h times the quantity b1 plus b2. It says solve for b1. So that's this guy right here. Sometimes I like to circle it, but basically you just, you're just you thinking about working from the outside in, do the opposite. Now you might recognize this formula, this is the formula for the area of a trapezoid, but uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this one half by multiplying by two over one, which is just like multiplying both sides by two. So now we're down to two A equals H times B1 plus B2. Again, working from the outside in towards B1, we're gonna divide by H Okay, so that those cancel, do it to both sides to keep it balanced, right? And then now you can see we're at B1 plus B2 equals 2A over H. We wanna subtract B2, okay, so that those cancel. And if we do that to the right side, we wanna do it to the left side. So we have 2A over H minus B2 equals B1. And that was our goal was to get B1 by itself, solve for B1, right? Okay, last example. This one's a little bit more challenging because we have uh, we're trying to solve for y, and you can see there's a y in this term as well as in this term. So what you wanna do when you have, you know, when you're trying to solve for a variable and there's more than one term that has that you know, desired variable, is you wanna group those terms together on one side of the equation that have that desired variable. Everything else you wanna get on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 2xy from both sides. So what we have here is we have y minus 2xy equals 3x, these are canceling, right, minus four. But you can see these both have a y. Let's go ahead and factor the y out. Okay, so meaning we're gonna divide these both by y, right? So that gives you y over y is one. Here the y is canceled, you get two x. Okay, so y times one minus two x equals three x minus four. And then now to get y by itself, what's the opposite of multiplying by one minus two x? Well, that would be to divide by one minus two x. So now we have y equals three x minus four over the quantity one minus two x, and you solve for your desired variable y.